Hi, I'm Bob Taper with LearnVisualStudio.net. Now we haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about scope with regard to variables, so I want to more fully explain that concept and then use that as the launching pad to explain the public keyword that we've used so many times when creating properties and methods inside of classes. We'll also talk about modules and finally explain why they are classes with superpowers. Okay, So let me start by saying that whenever you declare a variable inside of any code block, that variable is only alive for the life of that code block, meaning that when the code block is finished executing, the variable that was defined inside the code block is no longer accessible and its values are disposed of by the .NET Framework runtime. So let's see how that applies to the common code blocks that we've worked with up into this point in time. So let's start with just a simple example and we'll expand on it. Uh, for example, we'll create a for i equals 1 to 10. And so inside of this code block, we can reference, for example, um, console.writeLine value of i, console.readLine. OK, so we would expect this simple example to work just fine, and it does. Now, what if I wanted to go outside of here and go console.writeLine, the value of i? Well, you can see, first of all, I'm fighting the tools, which means that every time I try to type in the letter i, it does not recognize it as a variable. It doesn't even give me a choice in IntelliSense. Now, I could hit the Escape key on my keyboard and get rid of IntelliSense and force the issue. However, next, I'll see that we get a little red uh, smart tag and it says I is not declared. It may be inaccessible due to its protection level. Okay, so you can see that we declared I inside of this for next code block and therefore it's not accessible outside of the code block. What we can do is something like this, however, and dim j as integer uh, equal to zero and then we'll set j equal to I Okay, and then we'll come down here and we can print out the last value that j was set to. So let's run the application a second time or maybe let's do this. j was set to, all right, so now let's run the application. And you can see it was set to 10. Why 10? Because that was the last iteration. So because J is defined in this sub-main code block, it can be used inside of any child code blocks. But because I was defined in a child code block, it cannot be used outside of that code block. Okay? And the same could be true for a variable that we were to define outside of the submain. So we could do something like this, private k as integer equal to zero. And we can try doing this exact same exercise. All right, so k defined in the code block outside of submain. Let's see what happens this time. All right, and you can see that k could be read from any inner code block. Let's see what happens if we were to try to read uh, the value of k from uh, a helper method. So let's go sub my helper method. And then we'll do a console.writeLine value of k from my helper method. And then we're going to call my helper method. And let's see what happens this time. All right, and you can see the value of k is still set. And the reason is because, again, k was defined inside of the module as a private field, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. 
and therefore it is accessible to any code blocks that are siblings or children of those siblings in which case here's uh, we see actually all of those cases represented here in our code all right now we're going to define an even sillier example and I think you should already know the answer to this but We're going to use the letter L. And so now let's try to go here. And what if we try to print the letter L out? Well, again, we're fighting the tools, which is a, usually a bad sign. So let me hit L, escape. And as you might expect, because it's defined in an innermost code block, it's not accessible to any parents above it. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Once we have finished with this for next loop, the i goes out of scope, it's no longer available, but the value of i, since we save that off in other variables, is available. Okay, so hopefully that cements that idea in your mind about the scope of local variables. Uh, let's move on now. In the methods that we've written in previous lessons, we've always started with the word public. Uh, those methods that were defined inside of a class. Uh, this is called an accessibility modifier and it's used to implement another tenet of object-oriented programming called encapsulation. So in a nutshell, classes, when you create a class, it should be considered a black box. Uh, think of those old style television sets. Uh, when I was a kid, we owned a television that had a button to turn on the TV, uh, a dial that you would actually have to stand up, walk across the room and turn, uh, and then another dial to adjust the volume. It also had a place to attach an antenna and an electrical cord with a plug on the end, and that was it. <laughs> Everything else about the television was self-contained, and as a kid I was fascinated whenever my dad would take the back of the TV off uh, in order to fix something, like put in a new tube. I know these are all foreign terms to you young kids, but to this day it still seemed like a magical device. All I know is that there was a public interface, uh, the dials, the buttons, and so on. And frankly, to use the television, that's all that I needed to know. The same should be true of classes. All the important behind-the-scenes functionality should be encapsulated behind public methods and properties. Uh, the class may have private properties, or rather private fields, talk about those in a moment, as well as private methods that are used to enable all the business rules. In other words, enable the magic uh, that goes on inside of the class, but the consumer of the class shouldn't have to know anything about the inner workings in order to operate uh, in order to operate the class so to speak all right so we've used public and it means that a given class member should be freely visible on the other hand uh, there's the private accessibility modifier that means that the class member can only be called by uh, uh, any other methods that are living inside of the same class but not outside of that class. So you use them to create private helper methods or private fields. Uh, and so maybe a, a little example would, would illustrate this point. Let's go back to creating a new car class. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, instead of creating a public property make as string, I'm gonna do something different this time. I'm gonna create private make as string equals. All right, so what's the difference between these two? Well, this is not a property, so to speak. It is called a field, and it's a private field. It's just a member variable that's used local to uh, uh, the given class as K is in this instance, all right? And so now I can reference underscore make in any other method or property that are defined inside of my class. So I could do something like this. And I could retrieve the value of make equals Bob, or rather, let's go forward, okay? And that would work just fine. However, let's go ahead and save it. Sorry, force of habit there. Let's go to module one. Let's go down to the bottom here, right before the read line. And here I'm going to create a new instance of car. So dim my car as new car. And so my car dot, and I'm looking for underscore make. 
and we can't see it from here. Why not? Because it was declared private, all right? So private means that it can be referenced and used inside of the class, but not outside of the class. Public, on the other hand, means that it can be used outside the class. So coming back here, I go my car dot do something, and it's visible here. Okay. Private can also be used in uh, helper methods. Again, that are intended to be used only with inside the context of the class itself, not outside of the context of the class. So let's do a little fun experiment here. Private function helper method. Oops, let's do method as string. And then we'll just return hello world. All right, so it has a very simple function. Let's comment that out. Console.writeline me.helper method. Okay. Now let's go to module v, uh, module one dot vb and try to access helper method. My car dot helper and you can see it's not visible. And if we hover our mouse cursor under it, it'll say it's not accessible in this context because it is private. All right. So hopefully that cements that idea in your mind. Now. You might wonder why you even need uh, a private variable like this. These are referred to as private fields. And if we were to create a full version of make, for example, let me comment that out. And remember how we could do that really easy? We can just use the property tab tab syntax. And you'll notice in here, I'm just gonna go make. This is a fully formed property we were using the shortcut syntax called an auto-implemented property, but there is a, uh, the property is made up of two parts, a get and a set. And the purpose for a property is to be a gatekeeper to the underlying value that's stored in a private field. So ideally, whenever we receive a value, when somebody tries to set the value of a property, in this case make, we should do some uh, in the set, do some validation here to make sure this is a valid make. So we might do something like um, if value if value equals, and we could do something like a Ford or value equals BMW, then will allow the field to be set. Otherwise, we'll ignore that request or we could potentially raise an error and we'll talk about how to do that later. So in our code, we could attempt to do this. My car dot make equals Buick. <laughs> and then we'll do a console dot write line my car dot make and just to make sure we're looking at the right thing here, my car dot make, what is its value? And so let's run the application and you can see it's empty. So we were able to do some validation inside of this to make sure that somebody couldn't set the value of one of our properties to an improper state. That is the purpose for a property. And that's why you have the distinction between a private field and a public property. Again, the property is the gatekeeper, but the private field is what actually holds on to the value. Now, behind the scenes, when we used auto-implemented properties, all of this was done for us, but we can expand that at some later date and time in our application to make this full form use and do some validation. And in this case, we just oversimplified it. Uh, we could uh, compare it against a long list of possible values, uh, or if it were a numerical value, we want to make sure that it's a valid year or a color that would be valid for that given type of car. We could write a lot of logic into our, prop, uh, our property sets. And likewise, in our gets, we could um, just 
make sure that the user has uh, proper permissions to retrieve that information. If it was somehow uh, secure, we could do some uh, checks here. Make sure user is authorized to get this information before returning it. Okay, so there's a lot of utility that uh, is provided for us in this structure. But again, the private field makes that all possible. So I really want you to be thinking primarily about this uh, in regards to the .NET Framework class library. However, whenever you build your own custom classes, if that day should ever come, then you should strive to expose public methods that give a simple, straightforward, obvious usage for your class while keeping other helper methods and functionality privately tucked away and unavailable to prying eyes. You don't want developers fiddling around with the innards of your classes and potentially misusing your class. You want to give them a way to use the class properly through the methods that you design. This also removes ambiguity and makes its, its usage clearer and cleaner. So in the .NET Framework class library, methods and properties are exposed using the keyword public. They may use private methods and fields, but you would never know. They may use other types of accessibility modifiers as well, such as protected. And a protected method in a base class is visible to its derived classes, but not to other classes. Private methods in a base class cannot be seen by its derived classes. So as you can see, uh, the accessibility modifiers like public, private, and now protected provide different levels of visibility depending on what the author of the class deemed necessary. So just be aware of this. If you can't access something you think you should be able to access, it might be because that particular method is hidden on purpose from your use. And so finally, uh, in this lesson, I want to talk about modules. I've been saying all along that modules are classes with superpowers. All methods inside of modules are static or rather have the shared keyword. Do you remember what that means from an earlier video? It basically means that you don't have to create an instance of the module first. You can call any public method that's defined inside of the module without creating an instance of that module first. So let's do this. Let's create or add a new item, a new module, and we'll leave the default name module2. That's just fine. And here, I'm just going to create a public sub, and I'll call it public helper method. And um, I don't know, we could do something just easy, right? Console that right line from public helper method. And I might even just put uh, my module 2 dot. All right. Keeping in mind that module 2 is a class, just like car is a class, you might think, well, then we have to create an instance of module, but that's not so. What we can do is just refer to module 2 dot public helper method. And when we run the application, it's static. It's shared. So we're able to just access that instance of the module 2 class automatically without creating a new instance of it and then access any of its methods. Okay, So let's recap what we've learned in this lesson. We talked about variable scope, how variables have a lifetime based on the code block in which they're defined. And when that current code block is part of the current scope of execution at runtime, then that variable will be available. But when that current scope of execution is no longer uh, around, it no longer involves that code block, then the variable and its value will no longer be available. Okay. Uh, we also talked about accessibility modifiers like public, private, and protected, and how that might impact the way that we use the .NET Framework class, uh, class library. Uh, and perhaps even someday when we create our own class libraries, we need to make sure that we hide the implementation details inside of our classes using private helper methods and private fields behind more public method uh, interfaces and public properties. And then finally, we looked at modules uh, as a means of creating static or rather shared methods that can be utilized throughout our application. Okay, doing great. Hang in there. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.